So before we start really going into how hurricanes or tropical storms as they are otherwise known um, form, we really need to consider some of the conditions required for their formation. And there are three major conditions that we need to concern ourselves with. Firstly, they need an ocean temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. That is fundamental for a tropical storm to form. It provides the, the basic energy required for the storm to, for, for the storm to develop. We also need the Coriolis force. Yeah, we've talked about that before in our global atmospheric circulation video. It's that force caused by the rotation of the Earth that causes winds uh, to sort of divert over to the right or the left, depending on what hemisphere you are in. Okay? That Coriolis force is what causes the tropical storms to start spinning and provide that kind of uh, sort of stereotypical image of a hurricane from space with those rotating clouds. We also need a low vertical wind shear. By that, I mean that the wind speed as we travel up through the atmosphere from sort of ground surface or sort of right down at the bottom of the atmosphere up to the top of the atmosphere is very similar. If it isn't, if we have large changes, so in this case here we have, you know, each layer of wind is travelling at a similar speed here, five metres per second, I'll just put that as a, as a random number. Okay. You know, if this is, was different, if this was say five, 15 and 30 metres per second, you'd have what we'd call a high vertical wind shear. This wind speed would be increasing significantly enough in the atmosphere and that would stop any cloud development, which is fundamental again for a hurricane to form. So, we've got our conditions required. Now let's actually start getting into how they lead to a hurricane forming. Firstly, so we start off with that fundamental 27 degrees Celsius ocean temperature. This is incredibly important. What it does is it heats the air directly above the ocean. That warm air, as we know, becomes less dense and rises, okay, creating a significant area of low pressure over the oceans. It, we know that as it's air above the oceans, it's also going to be heavy with moisture due to evaporation from that warm ocean surface. So we've got really warm, moist air rising. Okay, fundamentally important. As that warm, moist air rises upwards, okay, it's going to condense. We know it's going to cool down as it reaches the higher parts of the atmosphere. Okay, and we're going to see condensation. Okay, that's going to create large storm clouds, okay, otherwise known as cumulonimbus clouds, to begin to form. As we can see here, remember we need that low vertical wind shear speeds at reasonably similar speeds all the way up through the atmosphere. Otherwise, the clouds will just be torn or dissipated apart and not actually be able to form. That is important because as they form, as that process of condensation occurs, uh, latent heat energy is released by the process of condensation, which acts to fuel the storm and provide it with even more energy than the original warm water was providing it. Now, as that air rises upwards, as it's drawn up uh, into the clouds, and the cloud formation carries on, we're obviously creating that area of low pressure down at the Earth's surface above the ocean. And what happens is air is sort of sucked in to fill in that low pressure. Air from surrounding areas of higher pressure moves inwards and converges on that low pressure area. Now, I always imagine it if you think about like a, a balloon, okay, if you squeeze one end of it, if you fill the balloon halfway up and squeeze one end of it, the air is going to move to the other end of the, the balloon because you've created an area of high, high pressure where you squeezed it, the other end is low pressure. Now, that is really important. This is then when the Coriolis force comes in. As that air moves in to the low pressure, depending on what hemisphere it is, it's going to be deflected. Okay, so in the northern hemisphere, that air is moving into the low pressure area, and the air is deflected due to the Coriolis force to the right. Okay, and that motion of it being deflected to the right causes the air to start spinning actually around that low pressure area in an anti-clockwise motion. In the southern hemisphere, the air is deflected to the left. As a result, again, the air will start spinning, but this time in a clockwise motion around the area of low pressure. Now, we have talked about this before. The Coriolis force doesn't actually occur at the equator. Um, so that's why we don't see uh, hurricanes crossing the equator, and they generally don't form uh, anywhere between 5 degrees north or 5 degrees south of the equator. So what we now have, okay, back to kind of our original sort of starter point, that 27 degrees uh, Celsius water and that rising air forming up, that air is now starting to spin due to the Coriolis force, okay, and we've got cloud formation going on due to the condensation. Now what happens is over time, okay, that continued condensation creates larger and larger clouds. You know, hurricanes can stretch several hundred kilometres across, okay. What we get 
is within these clouds we get large uh, rain bands forming. Okay, they spiral inwards towards the center of the hurricane, otherwise known as the hurricane eye, and we'll come to that in a second. Okay. So we can see here we have these bands of very heavy precipitation. Now what happens is when that warm air is rising up, okay, some of it will escape at the top of the cloud formation and circle back round, cooling down, condensing, as uh, it cooling down, becoming denser and moving back towards the uh, towards the low pressure at the base of the storm. Okay, creating kind of like a feedback loop. However, not all of the air can come out the top and around the side. Some of it is actually forced back down the centre of the storm. Okay, and that sinking air actually creates quite a calm, stable area of uh, weather called the hurricane eye. You know, you'll see that in those in those photos, satellite images of hurricanes who are spiralling around that central area of the eye. In the eye, conditions are very calm. There's very little cloud formation due to the fact that the air is sinking rather than rising now. Um, conditions are quite light. You may be able to see um, the sun during the day or stars at night because I said very little cloud formation. Either side of that eye is the eye wall. This is the most violent part of the storm. There's very strong winds and very heavy rainfall or precipitation occurring in the eye wall. As long as the storm stays over that warm water, it will continue to grow in size. The constant rising air followed by the process of condensation releasing that latent energy will continue to build larger and larger cumulonimbus storm clouds and we said with that eye becoming more and more stable but with more and more intense rainfall uh, and precipitation bands outside of that spiraling around it due to the Coriolis force however once the storm moves either over land or starts to move over water that is cooler than that required 27 degrees celsius it loses that basic energy source that it needs to create that rising air and therefore that condensation and therefore that latent heat. Okay? And as a result, the storms start to run out. That's why you hear about storms as soon as they make landfall, they start to run out of energy very quickly.